Hello, everybody. Very important lesson today. I can solve exponential equation word problems by raising to the reciprocal power if it's a constant exponential equation or taking the log of both sides if it's a variable exponential equation. So in order to perform, in order to complete this lesson, you need to have already learned how to do constant exponential equations and variable exponential equations. Other than that, there's really not much new. So we'll come back to that in a moment. So for exponential equations, no matter if it's a variable or a constant, I'm always starting by isolating the base. Whatever's being risen to the power needs to be by itself on one side of the equal sign. Once I isolate the base, if it's a variable in the, in the exponent, I take the log of both sides. If it's a constant in the exponent, I raise both sides to reciprocal power. So for some problems, I'll be taking the log of both sides. For some, I'll be raising to the reciprocal power, depending on what's in the exponent. If it's just a number, I'm raising to the reciprocal power. If there's a variable, then I'm taking the log of both sides. So this is going to come up later on, uh, doubling, tripling, increasing, or decreasing by a percent. So we'll come back to that later. Number one is actually pretty simple. There's really not much algebra to it, but we'll go through it. A population of wolves in a county is represented by the equation P of T equals 80, blah, 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 where T is the number of years since 1998. It's really important to recognize what the variables represent. So I'm going to list what the variables represent. P of T, it says, is the population. And T, it says, is number of years since 1998. Now understand that p of t is one variable. It's like f of x. It's like y. It's just one variable. You're not multiplying anything. p of t is just the variable for population. Now it's asking you to predict the number of wolves in the population since uh, in, the, in the population in the year 2008. So is that giving me p of t or t? Well, 2008 is a year, so it's giving me t. There is one little twist though. T is year since 1998. So 2008 is 10 years after 1998. So T is 10. So if it's giving me T, I'm just replacing T with 10. Now, this is not an exponential equation. There's no variable. I just got to put this into the calculator and I'm going to have my answer. 80, let's just clear all this stuff out from the geometry, 80, 0 0.98 to the power of 10. It says predict the number of wolves, so I'm going to make the assumption that it wants us to round to the nearest wolf, which would be 65. And that's your answer. So recognize what the variables represent. They're going to give you a value. Substitute it in for the appropriate variable, and you'll have your answer. <clears throat> After an oven is turned on, it's temperature T. So capital T is going to be temperature. It's represented by the equation, blah, 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 where M represents minutes. So T is temperature, M is minutes. I'm going to scroll down or look down to the bottom here. It's giving me a value. 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Is that T or is that M? Well, that's a temperature, so this is telling me that T is 300. So I'm going to replace T with 300. Now I have to solve this equation because there is a because it's an exponential equation. I'm going to have to follow the steps for an exponential equation. My first step is to isolate. What's being risen to the power? 3.2 is being risen to the power. So I need to get rid of everything else. Now, here's some common mistakes. I cannot combine 400 and 350. I cannot subtract those because the 350 is attached to the 3.2. So I can't do that. Another common mistake. I can't multiply these because the 3.2 is attached to the negative 0.1m. So to isolate, I always add or subtract first. So 
I start by subtracting the 400. And then I divide last, I'm dividing by the negative 350. Now I would put that negative 100 over three, negative 350 into your alpha y equals enter. If you didn't, you'll get a decimal. If you do, you'll get a fraction. Either one's fine. I find it easier to deal with the fraction. So my left-hand side is going to be 2 sevenths. And my right-hand side is going to be 3.2 to the negative 0.1m. Now that I'm isolated, is this a variable or a constant exponential equation? Well, since there's a variable up there, there's an m up there, it's a variable exponential equation. And to solve variable exponential equations, I do the log of both sides. So, I have log of 2 over 7 equals log of 3.2 to the negative 0.1m. The reason I do that is to get my exponent in front. So it's log of 2 over 7 equals negative 0.1m log 3.2. And again, variable exponential equations, you need to have watched that lesson first. Now I'm one step from the end. I want to solve for m, so I'm dividing by negative 0.1. And I'm dividing my log of 3.2, negative 0 0.1, log of 3.2. I type this ugly thing into the calculator. Alpha y equals enter, log of 2 over 7, over negative... 0 0.1 log 3.2 it wants me to round to the nearest minute that would be 11. so what did we do it gave me t was 300 so i replaced the t with 300 into the given equation and from there, I did the algebra, I solved the variable exponential equation, which is what we did in the last lesson. Number three, meteorologists can determine how long a storm lasts by using the function t of d equals. So I have two variables, I have t of d, and I have d. Remember, t of d is just one variable. d is the diameter of the storm. And T of D, or T, is the time. So, it's giving me 4.75 hours. Is that T of D, or is that D? Well, hours is time, so it's giving me T of D. So, I'm going to replace T of D with 4.75, and I plug that into the rest. Now it's an exponential equation, so my first step is to isolate. D is being risen to the power, so I have to get rid of the 0 0.07 by dividing. I have D to the 3 halves on the right-hand side, my left-hand side, 4.75 divided by 0 0.07 is 67 dot dot dot. Again, I'm not going to round to the very end. I'm just going to write 67 dot, dot, dot to signify there's more to come. Now that I'm isolated, is this a variable or a constant exponential equation? Well, since there's no variable in the exponent here, it's a constant exponential equation. And to solve constant exponential equations, I raise both sides to the reciprocal power. So I'm going to raise both sides to the 2 thirds power Again, reciprocal means flip the fraction. Those cancel. My left-hand side, I'm going to take my previous answer. You can just, you can copy and paste it by tabbing up and hitting enter. 
to the alpha y equals enter, two-thirds power. Or you could have just hit to the power and that answer will pop up. And you'll see it'll get the same thing. That's 16.6. .6. Or you could have typed in second answer um, to do it that way. Either way, to the nearest tenth, 16.6. .6. Number four, a population of rabbits doubles every 60 days according to the formula. All right, we have P and we have T. It says that P is the population. And it says that T is days. What is the value of T when the population is 320? Well, P is the population, so it's giving me P. So, 320, I replace P with, and I have my equation. It's an exponential equation, so my first step is to isolate the base. What's being risen to the power? 2. So, to isolate the base, I need to get rid of the 10, so I divide by 10. Again, very common mistake. Students want to multiply the 10 and the 2. You can't because the 2 is attached to that exponent. So. 320 over 10 is 32, equals 2 to the power of t over 60. Now that I'm isolated, I need to, because there's a variable involved, I need to take the log of both sides. So I'm going to log both sides. The reason I do that is to get the exponent to come in front. So I have log 32 equals t over 60 log 2. Now, a lot of you don't like dealing with the fraction. Well, we learned how to deal with the fraction. To get rid of fractions, this is just an equation solving thing. I multiply it by the LCD, which in this case is 60. Those cancel. I get 60 log 32 equals t log 2. Almost there. I divide away the log 2. Alpha y equals enter. 60 log 32 over log 2. And I get 300. All right, let's skip ahead to number eight. Juliet deposits $3,000 into a bank account, blah, 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 blah. It's giving you an equation. B of T is the balance. T is the years. So these are not, these are three separate questions. It's not multiple choice, these are three separate questions. How long will it take for Juliet's money to double? So it is, it is indirectly giving you a piece of information here. It wants to know how long it will take for Juliet's money to double. It's telling you that Juliet's money will double. Well, how much did she start with? 3,000. So if she started with 3,000, then she's going to end up with 3,000 times 2, which is 6,000. That's going to be her balance. So for A, I'm going to do 3,000, I'm uh, sorry, not 3,000. I'm going to do... 6,000 equals 3,001.063 to the power of T. 
and I'll solve it, and we'll worry about that after the fact. For B, it wants to know how long it will take for Juliet's money to triple. Well, if her money's tripling, if she's starting with 3,000, and it's tripling, that is indirectly telling us that her balance is going to be 9,000. So, it's going to be 9,000 equals 3,000, 1.063 to the power of T. C, increasing by 50%. Well, if it's increasing by 50%, whenever you are increasing or decreasing by a percent, you're adding or subtracting that percent from 1. So let's do a little mini lesson on that first. So let's say that I am increasing by 20%. If I'm increasing by 20%, first of all, percents, we divide by 100 to make into decimals, which become 0.2. So if I'm increasing by 20%, it would be 1 plus 0.2, which is 1.2. If I'm decreasing by 20%, well, that would be 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. If I'm increasing by 5%, that would be 1 plus 0.05 which is 1.05. If I'm decreasing by 5%, that will be 1 minus 0 0.05, which is 0.95. And you can use your calculator to do the subtractions or additions if you need to. So whenever you're increasing or decreasing by a percent, you're doing 1 plus or 1 minus that decimal, depending, of course, if it's increasing or decreasing. So here, I want you to try these two on your own. Increasing by 8%, decreasing by 10%. I want you to just tell me what you're going to multiply by for each of them. Take about 15 seconds. If I'm increasing by 8%, that's 1 plus 0 0.08, which is 1.08. If I'm decreasing by 10%, that's 1 minus 0 0.10, which is 0.9. This is the first time you're seeing this in this course, at least. You should have seen it in Algebra 1 and Geometry. You're going to see it a lot throughout the rest of this course. So this is kind of the beginning of the year. So... If her money is increasing by 50%, that's 1 plus 0.5, which is 1.5 times, this is getting a little too messy. It's getting a little too messy for me. So it's going to become 1 plus 0.5, which is 1.5 times 3,000 which you can use your calculator, is 4,500. Because it's increasing by 50%, that's 1 plus 0.5, which is 1.5. So, B of T is 4,500 equals 3,000, 1.063 to the power of T. I'm not going to solve all three of these. They're going to be very, very similar. I'll just solve one of them. I'll solve A. It's an exponential equation, so I'm dividing both sides by 3,000 because my first step is to isolate. Now that I'm isolated, since it's a variable in the exponent, I'm going to take the log of both sides. So I get log 2 equals log 1.063 to the power of t. The reason I do that is to get my variable, my exponent in front. And then to get t by itself, I divide both sides by log of 1.063. Alpha y equals enter log 
two divided by log 1.063 to the nearest tenth of a year it says to round to, so that's going to be 11.3. B and C are going to be very, very similar procedures. Obviously, just the left-hand side is going to be a little bit different. So again, if it's, it's, if it's telling you that the money is doubling, that's indirectly telling you the balance. And to find that balance, you're taking the initial and you're multiplying it by 2. If it's telling you that it's tripling, then you're taking that initial balance and you're multiplying it by 3. If it's increasing or decreasing by a percent, then you are adding or subtracting that percent to one. And of course, you have to make your percent into a decimal first. That's where I got the 1.5 from. So you're definitely going to see this. If you're doubling, tripling, or increasing by a percent, you're taking the initial amount and you're multiplying it by the appropriate value. Two for doubling, three for tripling. And if you're increasing or decreasing by a percent, then you're adding or subtracting that percent to one. So let's just set up one more, and then after that, I'm going to let you guys um, practice on your own. This is a long lesson. I understand that. It's something that needs to be practiced, and I will give you ample time to do that. Number nine, 200 grams of a radioactive substance decays according to the formula A of T equals blah, 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 where A of T is the amount. and T is years. To the nearest hundredth of a year, how long will it take until there are 150 grams remaining? Well, that's pretty straightforward. A of T is the amount remaining. It's telling us there's 150 grams remaining. So I'm replacing A of T with 150. That's how you'd set up A. B, how long will it take for the amount of the substance to decrease? So basically, this is sum of the A of C is 150. If it's decreasing by 20%, then I'm doing 1 minus 0.2, which is 0.8. And I'm doing 0.8 times the initial amount, which is 200. And you can use a calculator if you need to. That's 160. So for B, it's going to be 160 equals 200.094 to the 2T. Now C, how long will it take until there is 40% remaining? So we didn't quite talk about this. It doesn't say it's increasing by a percent. It doesn't say it's decreasing by a percent. It says that there's 40% remaining. So if there's 40% remaining, that means it's 40% of 200, which is 80. So A of T is 80 equals 200.094 to the power of 2T. If you're increasing by a percent, you're adding it to 1. If you're decreasing by a percent, like you were in B, you're subtracting from 1. If that percent is remaining or maintaining, that's the percent that you're finding. And whenever you are working with percent, you're multiplying it by the original. So all three of these are very similar. I'm not going to solve all of them. In fact, why don't you try A right now on your own to solve it? Then I'll go over it. Then I'm going to give you the rest of the period to do this on your own. So try A on your own. So pause. Try A in your own, unpause. Okay, now that you tried A in your own, let's see if you got it right. These are exponential equations, so my first step is to isolate. So I'm going to divide away the 200. 150 divided by 200, you can use a calculator if you need to. I believe that's 0 0.75 equals 0 0.094 to the power of 2t. Now that you isolated the base, there's a variable in the exponent. So I'm doing the log of both sides. I have log of 0.75 equals log 
of 0 0.094 to the 2t power. The reason I do that is to get the exponent in front. So I have log 0.75 equals 2t log 0 0.094. One step away, I need to get rid of the 2 and the log of 0 0.094. I go to my calculator, if it turns on, alpha y equals enter. Make sure you're using alpha y equals enter whenever you're typing a fraction like this in. Log point, if you're not getting the same answer as me, most likely that's your issue. Make sure you're using alpha y equals enter. 2 log point zero nine four. Um, let me just make sure I did everything right there. Yep, I don't see any issues. Um, to the nearest hundredth would be point zero six, And that's it. So same type of thing for B, same type of thing for C. It's going to be the same procedure. And... Um, that's it. Practice. Again, if there's a variable in the exponent, then you are taking the log of both sides. If it's a constant, we didn't see as many of those, and you're not going to see as many of those. But if there's a constant, then you're raising both sides to the reciprocal power. If you're increasing or decreasing by a percent, you're doing 1 plus or 1 minus the rate, and you're taking that, and you're multiplying it by the initial to find the balance or the after amount. If you're doubling, you're multiplying the original by 2. If you're tripling, you're multiplying the original by 3, etc. Very important lesson, something that comes up a lot. So again, make sure you put the time in, you practice, you utilize the key, and I hope everybody has a great day.